Hi, it's Imogen Lamport from Inside Out Style, coming to answer your colour and style questions. I'm just throwing them everywhere. If I wanted to put it in a nutshell, I struggle with overwhelm. I've been told what my colouring is. It's clear. and It's a deep winter and I'm also a true winter and I'm a bright spring and a vivid winter. And I'm so totally confused. Uh, and then as far as body shape goes, there are so many systems too, from Kibby to Trini and Susanna's what not to wear and just so many more. I'm so confused. I don't know what to believe, who to believe and what to do. I wish I had the self-confidence to dress with certainty rather than always feeling confused about what is right and what I should do. And in some ways, this is very similar to our last question. Just it's this overwhelm from too much information that it looks like, Erica, you have been searching for some time to get the answers and nothing has given you quite the right answer. You've been trying different things out uh, and you know, you're now you've kind of got so much, you're overwhelmed. And I think there's a couple of things here that you want to think about. Now, there is no one right system. I have my own systems. I have my absolute color system, which is, has 18 different color palettes uh, based on the properties of color. Now, when you are getting different color analysis answers, it's usually because potentially the system doesn't have the right palette for you. Uh, and you know, but the fact that you're getting a, you know, overall brighter colors tends to say to me in cool colors, you've got one spring that seems to be the outlier amongst all the winters. I would suspect potentially you have got cooler and deeper coloring. Anything else? I don't know what, how bright or muted they are. I really couldn't tell without doing a color analysis, but there, there is certain things. Now, what can happen too is when a consultant's doing a color analysis and they don't have a palette that fits you, they will try and make you fit into a palette. They have to make a decision about do they decide on is more the undertone more important or is the value or more important? So the value just means how light or dark the color is, whether they give you a dark palette like a deep winter or a light palette. Uh, there's no such thing as a light winter in seasonal. And this is where some of these issues lie, is that many of these systems kind of are missing parts of that, uh, you know, the different color properties and having options for people in every uh, different kind of coloring. Sometimes too, and, and like, you know, we are all fallible humans, that some consultants like certain colors and they want to make everybody those colors. So they may have a preference for warm colors. So the person who made you a vivid spring might like spring colors and they just think they look good on everybody. Uh, and I have seen this before where it's very hard. One of the things we have to learn when we're doing color analysis and something I really um, stress when I'm teaching my students is that we have to get rid of our own preferences. We have to let them all go. We all have color preferences. But when we are doing color analysis, we have to let them all go. Uh, and we have to see every color as beautiful in the correct context. And so every client is a different context and we have to find the colors that make them beautiful, that are in harmony with them, rather than the colors that I like and that work on me. So this is where I really had to learn to love warm colors <laughs> when I was uh, learning to do color analysis. And I had to learn to love more muted colors because at the time I was very bright. And so I loved bright, cool colors and because that's what worked for me. So it's learning to see every color of beautiful. And I'll always remember an experience I had when one of my students was draping a client. It was her first draping and she was draping a client and she was cool. And the first client she had was cool. So it was really easy. It was like, ah, oh, you know, on these neutrals look great. And oh, I love this one and this one, this one. And then she was looking at some of the other ones going, who would look good in those? Those are horrible colors. And what was actually really funny is the next client she had looked great in those neutrals that had looked so terrible on the first um, client, who, the colors that also looked terrible on her. But as soon as she saw those colors on this client where they suited them, she went, ah, you're who looks good in these. And suddenly she could see that every color is beautiful in the right context. There is no ugly colors, um, but we do have our own personal preferences. So it is one of those things to be wary of. Sometimes and, and, you know, it is one of those things I think is quite sad, but there is sometimes where people get a, a bad steer as so, you know, towards which color groups work for them. And it can be sometimes because of, you know, their preferences of that color consultant.
and they haven't had me on their back talking about finding every color beautiful all the time. And then of course, body shape systems. There are a few body shape systems, but most of them have something in common. Now, the way I look at them is now, there are more than just four groups. So if you are looking at any system that only has four types, it's way too limiting for humans. Humans are so much more varied than just four types. So I would discount anything that's just a four type system because it's just too limited. Now, one of the things that I have noticed that there are different parts of body shape. So we have, and I call them the body equation. It's body shape plus body proportions plus body variations. So body shape is the overall silhouette of your body. Uh, the body proportions is how long each segment of your body is. It's sometimes known as the vertical body shape. So versus the body, the traditional body shape can be known as the horizontal body shape. This is the vertical body shape. And then we have body variations and things these are things like, you know, the length of your neck, the size of your bust, whether you have, you know, slimmer or more full upper arms, the size of your thighs, the size of your calves, the shapes, all those sorts of things. They are the extra, whether you have a more rounded bottom or a flatter bottom, whether you have squarer shoulders or more sloping shoulders, all these things come into body variations. And because they are not standard on any body shape, this is why I pull them apart from body shape, which is why if you look at my body shape Bible, it doesn't go into any of those things because, you know, my body shape calculator is just telling you body shape, is not telling you about body proportions and is not telling you about body variations. The problem with the Trini and Susanna what not to wear version is that they've tried to put body shape, body variations and body proportions all into 12 shapes. And again, even though it's 12 rather than four, it is still not broad enough for humans. And this is why I know for myself, I read it going, oh, well, I'm a bit of a brick and I'm a bit of a this and I'm a bit of a that. I'm not any of them in particular. And it's because I don't, you know, all my body variations plus my body proportions do not fit into, and the body shapes don't fit into 12 shapes. You could probably, you know, ex if you actually worked out all the different permutations, you'd be probably looking at thousands of shapes. I'm not the mathematician in my family. I should get somebody else to do the algorithm and figure out uh, just how many possible permutations there are, but it, it would be thousands. And this is why, for me, it's all about looking at each individual piece and then putting them together into the equation that is personalized for you. And that is everything I'm thinking about. When I'm thinking about you and your style, so if you are lost and confused, what I want you to think about is what is in harmony with me? What do I see in the mirror when I look at me? So when we're looking at coloring is what are the color properties that I have? Um, so rather than looking at the group and going, well, I must, you know, be a a, you know, a clear winter. And that means I have to wear, you know, these colors, but it's also looking at what's your color contrast and what's your value contrast and other aspects of color as well, how you put the colors together for you. So you can get a palette, but you might think it doesn't work if you are wearing something that's a high color contrast and you're a low color contrast, for example, or if you're wearing something that's a high value contrast and you're a low value contrast or the other way around, no matter what it is. So I always think it's important to remember what we want to do is replicate what we are seeing in the mirror. And this is why how we can find our own harmony and create our own personalized style guidelines, because in the end, we're looking at what is in harmony with our body the body we have today, not the body we had at any other period of our life, and what is in harmony with our current colouring. And if anybody who's known me for a few years knows that I used to have black hair and then I went blonde and now I am grey. I don't have the same colouring I had when I was younger. Uh, you know, so it's thinking about how all those things change and finding the harmony with them as you are today. So rather than just sticking with a system that particularly the more prescriptive a system that says, you know, if you are this tall, you also must be this personality or trying to interlink these things that are not necessarily linked. That's where confusion tends to lie because you don't feel true or right in that. What I want you to do is find how to get your personalized guidelines. And this is something that there's a little bit more work put into this because you're not just being handed on a platter. You have to actually make some decisions. You can get that information. It's what I do. It's what I teach people. Um, uh, but it's not 
uh, it's, you know, it's not a one done and dusted. It is really something you have to think about when you are, you know, putting together your style guidelines and, you, and they're personalized to you. So any one system is only as good as the options it gives you. So if you feel constricted by a system that you are using, then that system isn't working for you because it is not personalized to you. It's basically telling you that you have just to follow a real strict formula and that formula doesn't work for you because it's not taking into account your personality and who you are and your lifestyle and your location and your age and any health needs that may imp impact on what you can wear. I mean, this list goes on and on and on. I want you to be the boss of your wardrobe and I want you to start building the the wardrobe of your dreams rather than your nightmares. So every morning when you're in there, because we have to get dressed every single day, that it doesn't feel overwhelming. It doesn't feel bad. You don't feel guilty about, you know, having spent money on clothes you don't wear, all those sorts of things. It's my passion to help you really be in charge and be the boss of your wardrobe so that you have the life that you want to as well. So Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate you being here with me today and I look forward to chatting with you soon. Bye for now.